guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Have a fantastic song for you today. We're going to learn how to play Killer Queen. Now I know this is pretty much on piano, but I'm going to do all these chords um, uh, so arranged for acoustic guitar. You can play on electric. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'm going to switch to electric by the magic of video editing, and I'm going to do Brian May's guitar solo in full. So we have a lot of stuff in here that we're not going to get exactly right with all the harmony stuff. I'm kind of play the main line if it's like a guitar, you know, solo part or whatever, um, instead of, you know, showing you all 18 guitar parts or whatever. So you'll get it and it'll sound great. So don't worry. All right. So we are in standard tuning here. Please, before we get into it, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do. And while you do that, ring the little notification bell so you know when I release a new video. Um, that helps me out and helps YouTube out, helps the world uh, go around, all that good stuff. Anyway, let's get started. So we're going to start here with this verse. A lot of bar chords here, I apologize. So we are uh, in a C minor shape here. It's a full bar, uh, just a, a bar across five strings of the, uh, at the third fret. Fourth fret of the B, fifth on the G, fifth on the D. She keeps the moment on. All right, from there, you pretty much take the same chord shape, but you're gonna make it a major chord shape by moving it over to a full six string bar chord. So, and we're up here at this B flat major. So, full, full bar to sixth fret, eighth on the A string, eighth on the D, seven on the G. So, I'm gonna rotate between those two chords a couple of times. So, we're gonna, she keeps a moment You do that Marie Antoinette part, you switch to a an E flat major chord. So that E flat major chord, you can, like you guys probably know, I like to play a lot of bar chords on my pinky. Um, uh, but you might want to play it like that. So sixth fret there on the A, eighth fret on the D, G, and B. So Marie Antoinette, and then from there we have this. A All right, so that we're gonna start that little kind of descending bass line um, thing with that E flat major chord. Then we're gonna go to this chord, fifth fret there on the A string, and then the eighth fret on the D, and then um, the uh, seventh fret on the G, and sixth fret on the B. So the all right, now from there we have a cool chord. That's pretty cool. That's an E flat dominant seven with a D flat in the bass. So E flat dominant seven third inversion. Um, so we're gonna sit here. Uh, we're gonna play the fourth fret there on the A string, fifth on the D, sixth on the G. And then you get that bar is going to get the fourth fret there on the B string as well. So just the four middle strings on all these chords here. All three of those chords, just the four middle strings, which you want to strum across. Then we just take it to an A flat major chord. So that's just like that B flat major we just did, but just down to the fourth fret. And then, so we have this. take that and just change it to a minor. We can do that just by lifting up the second finger. All right. And 
And then we go up to this chord, which is going to be this E flat major chord with a B flat in the bass. So second inversion. So once again, I'm going to borrow here the eighth fret on the D, G, and the B. But now I want to play the sixth fret there on the low E, not the A string. So that A string is muted by the bottom of your index finger there. So you're going to hold that chord a little bit longer. So if I, if I do this at the end of the line, you'll see it. So I hit it four times instead of just twice. And that resolves to that B flat major that we did earlier. All right, so that's the whole um, first verse. Then we get to the pre-chorus, which sounds like this. Goes into the, the chorus there. All right, so now the pre-chorus is the same the you know the first couple times you hear it in the song, and then after the guitar solo, it's it's a little bit long, a little bit more extended, and we'll talk we'll talk about that when we get there. All right, so G7 is going to start this. So that's the full bar at the seventh. Uh, I'm sorry, full bar at the third fret, and then you're going to add the fifth fret on the A, the fourth fret there on the G string. So it's just like a standard D major chord, but just pick up your pinky. And then we go from that G7 over to the C minor that we played earlier. So we have this kind of hit me one just with down. You notice when I'm playing a lot of these, I'm muting the chord right after hit. Kind of gives it that percussive. So I'm not going. I'm not letting it ring. I'm just I just simply release the pressure in the in the in the hand to get it that kind of rhythmic hit it release. But I don't come off the strings at all. So still have the chord underneath my fingers. So we have this. And then we do the same thing. We move up to the B flat seven. So this we play this G7 chord, but now the sixth fret. And then back to that E flat major chord. So we have this. Alright, and then we go to a D7 chord. So that's gonna be a bar to fifth fret. I know it's a lot of bar chords. It's good workout though. Good workout for that index finger. All right, so uh, bar to fifth fret across five strings, and you can play seventh fret on the D and seventh fret on the B. And then we're gonna end it with two real quick hits: a G minor. So instead of that G major or G seven, whatever, um, we're gonna have a full bar, and then the fifth fret on the D and the A string. Just hit it once, and then we're going to take that same uh, dominant 7 chord shape and play it at the first fret. So we have this. So that's the very end of it. So all together. Extraordinarily nice. So I did that. Those two last chords and just takes us right into the uh, chorus. Chorus looks like this. She's a As most Queen music is, it is a chord workout. So uh, when you ever got Freddie Mercury in a piano, he just went nuts. So anyway, we have a the B flat major chord. So, hey, we did an open position chord, look at that. So the first, you have to do this B flat uh, major chord. So first fret on the uh, A string, and then third fret on the D, G, and the B. You can do it like that, with your pinky. You can do it like that, whatever was comfortable. Killer queen. That goes to a D minor there. She's a killer queen. And then we go back to that G minor. And then back to the D minor. So we go, she's a killer And then back to the G minor. Now that, there's a quick little change there on A dominant seven. 
then the D minor. So that little dominant seven there is just going to be open A, second fret on the D, G, and the B with the third fret there on the high E. Resolved to that D minor again. So we were just going G minor to D minor, but the second time around, you throw that little A7 in there. So we have this so far. She's a And then we go to a G7 chord, played like this. Now the reason I want to do that is because we have a little moving bass line. So we have the first fret on the high E, second fret on the A, third fret on the low E. Everything else is open. And then you play the open A string and maybe strum those top strings. So we have this with an up short, so we have this. Open A, little up strum, and then the second fret on the A, a little up stroke on the on the chord too. So we have this. It resolves there to a C major chord, and before you know it, another bar chord quickly happens. A B flat major happens again. So that whole chorus looks like this. She's a killer. Then we have this. Alright, so that starts uh, with that A7 again that we just did to that D minor. Then a G7, the way we played it the first time with the bar chord, to a C minor. So with this. And then we, real quick, even though that's a C minor chord he's playing there, he quickly goes, he plays a C major to a B flat major. So that's just, just play that same as that B flat major chord, but play here at the third fret real quick, and then back to that B flat major. All right, then after the, we have this little transition thing here. This is where a lot of guitar harmony work starts happening with the electric guitars. I'm really going to do closer to what he does live, uh, Brian May does live with the but I'm also going to try to add some of the piano chords with it too. So it's going to sound like this. And then we're back to the verse again. So first that little chord little figure, little kind of boogie woogie piano part is a uh, F major chord. So you pick the, the low string a couple times and then strum the chord and then back to the low E string. So. But then just change the chord on top to a B flat major by still keeping that F in the bass. So this. And then we do this little. Basically you're sliding into the third fret on the G and fourth fret on the B. So like this. Then he comes back and hits that F real quick and then jumps back into the those two slides. And then we go back to the rhythm figure again. And then we just do it without the slides. Go just on that F to B flat. So I'll have to get that part slow. Okay, so like I said, those guitar parts there are, I'm not doing the little high harmony thing that he did there. We're kind of choosing the parts that we do it. And he can't do a live either, so he kind of sticks with those two live. So we're gonna do it as well. All right, now we get to back to the first to the verse again. Same exact thing we did. Same exact parts, chords to the verse, to the pre-chorus, and the chorus. Everything is exact same, except coming out of that second chorus, we have the guitar solo, and the chords underneath the guitar solo looks like this. And then 
and there's a little section where he plays the solo by himself and then at the end of the solo we come back in with these chords <laughs> So a lot of that, that second half you've already seen. So the so the chords underneath the when he just starts to that little part is just gonna be A major. So it's just the same as that G up to the A major, fifth fret, over to the D minor, and then back, repeat it. So it's the same chord shape you did from the major to the minor, and then the same thing at the third fret. That last C minor just hit once, and you're gonna jump down. And really, all when you jump down here to this F, just hit like the power chord if you want. Just the uh, first fret on the low E, third fret on the A, uh, third fret on the D. Hit a couple times again, and then one more time, and then that guitar solo works its way up as little harmony parts until little uh, when Brian May goes into his main part of his solo there. And then um, at the end of the, when all the harmony parts start coming at the end, the guitar solo, we have that same thing that the, that little chord progression happens under. That, that how we ended that, um, um, the, the verse. But then after we did that little ending, it does it again. Back between those two chords. All right, and then we get to uh, right after that solo, we have the um, the last pre-chorus, which is longer, more. It's a, a kind of extended pre-chorus. Uses a lot of the same chords, and then at the end, I have this little fancy little thing they do. So it sounds like this. This just so this is coming right out of the guitar solo. <laughs> solo there so I mean I'm sorry the chorus so what this is is when we did the previous pre-chorus we did that G7 to C minor and then up to the B flat to the E flat um, so we're still doing those chords except we're gonna do each like the D, G7 to C minor you're gonna do it twice before moving up to the B flat then the same thing up here when the D flat 7 to the E flat major you're gonna do that twice then we're to that D7 twice, and then that same G minor to F7 into the B flat major chord. So we have that from that D7. And then there's a little picking pattern. And then into the chorus. So after you play that B flat major chord, you're gonna jump up and play this little. So that's gonna be six four in the B, five three in the G, five three in the D. So. And then we're gonna play three one three one three one on the from three one on the D, three one on the A, three one on the uh, low E. And then you hit that like four times when you get down up, or five times on the low E. We're back to the chorus. All right, so with that. And back to the same chorus that we did before, the same little figure that we had earlier in the song. And then we go back into that. And he starts doing the higher little harmony parts on the electric guitar and stuff. All right, so let me switch over to the electric um, so I can show you guys Brian May's killer guitar solo. <laughs>
All right, so now we're gonna take a look at Brian May's soul there. There's a couple of different sections to it, really can kind of look at it. Um, so we're gonna start here. We're still in standard tuning here with just a little electric guitar. Let's play this. All right, so that's gonna be the opening line. We don't have a lot of harmony work going on yet. That's at the end of the solo where I kind of took like a specific part of it that I thought was the main line. Live, he usually kind of improvises something there. I, I, I can see he doesn't really repeat himself too much. So we're gonna start here with a bend here at the eighth fret there on the B. Bend it up a whole step and then pick it a couple of times after you bend. Then back down to the eight on the B and then pull off six to five on the B. Over to seven on the G. So this. And then we have this. So that's gonna be five, six on the high E. Then eight on the B, back to the five on the high E string. So we have this. And then once again, pull off six to five on the B, over to seven on the G. So the whole first phrase. All right, next phrase. So that is gonna be, start with a pre-bend now, the sixth fret on the B string. So do a whole step pre-bend and then pick, release, so this. And then once again, six on the B, three on the high E string, and then pull off four to three on the B, over to five on the G. So. And then we're gonna have this kind of a quicker little lick. Three on the high E string, four, six on the B. So this. And then three, four, three on the B. Over to four on the G. And then that gets us into the next little phrase. So, but we just have this now. Next phrase. Now, as you can tell, there's a lot of harmony work going on there, so I just kind of picked a couple of the lines to play there. That, little, that I think leads us well into the solo. It's you can't make it sound like it unless you have a a, a lot more guitarists in your band than most. <laughs> so anyway. And really what he does live, he does, he does those slides. I kind of like doing that, kind of sliding into that, that F there, the third fret on the D a couple times, and then doing that into that third, like, kind of like we did on the acoustic, into the third on the G, fourth on the B, a couple times like this. And then the third time of doing that, you do that F, and then you gotta jump up and grab, grab these kind of major sixth intervals there. So with this eighth fret on the D and the B together. So I kind of hybrid pick that, and then up to nine, and ten, slide up to thirteen. So that's just kind of my way of doing it. it really, that part right there which could really be done anyway. But I like the way this sounds. All right, so now we have this next section where I, I just kind of switched to the neck pickup to kind of more closely match the tone there. Um, and it sounds like this. So this part right here, we're up to 17th fret on the G string a couple times, down to 15. And then you're gonna do a pre-bend of a whole step like that, and then release it. Over to the 17th on the D. Then we have, this, which is the, we have this at like the 18th fret on the B, a couple times, then 15, and then pull off 16 to 15. You got to pick 16, pull off to 15. Over to that 17 on the G. So so far we have this. All 
All right, and then we start to lick again, but it's, it's a little bit different this, this time. So that right there, the initial little melody is a little bit different than the first time we played it. We just picked 17 once, and then do that pre-bend immediately. And release. And then pull off 17 to 15 over to 17 on the D. And then we jump back to this 15 twice on the beat to 12. Then you're gonna pull off 13 to 12 on the beat. Then 15 to 12. So this. Then move up one fret and pull off 16 to 13. And then up to the 18th fret, pull off 18 to 16. And do a whole step into the 18th fret. So with this. All right, now where we get to this bend of the 18th fret is where there's a lot of harmony work going on. So I guess kind of picking out something that I think not only sounds good, but it's kind of a main melody within that. So it looks like this. All right, so after that seven, that bend of the 18th fret, you're gonna go 16 on the B, 18, over to 15 on the high E string. Back to 16 on the B, and 17 on the G. And then 16 on the G. So this. And then go 18, 16 on the B, over to 15 on the G. And then I just go 17, 15. So we have this so far. And then into some bends at the 18th fret on the B string. Kind of bend and release. Let that ring, and then we have this. So that's that bend at the 18th fret again. And then you're gonna grab the 18th fret on the high E string. And keep holding this bend there, the picking that B string again, and then bend it up another half step to miss. All right, and then we get to that little drop of a hat, she's a hat, and then there's a, there's a little part like this. And that's just a kind of a, a bend, real quick bend and release at the 10th fret on the G string, pulling off to the eight. So that's kind of in the, that last pre-chorus. All right, now the really only thing we have to talk about is the very end of the song, where he does that little. And then he start adding the harmony part, so you might want to jump up at the very end. So that, to that bend there at the 18th fret there on the B string. Maybe do the first couple here. And then up to here. And then we have this little lick that ends it and it looks like this. Now what's going on, those are two separate guitars doing that. One of them does a pre-bend at the 18th fret on the high E string and then release, and then pull off to 15. And that's in the right side of the speaker, <laughs> the right speaker, right side of the stereo spectrum. And then we have kind of the same lick on with a different guitar playing a pre-bend at the 18th on the B string, release, and pulling off to 16. And that's in the left side. So it goes So we have this. Now, they kind of overlap one another, so the kind of the better way that I play it is kind of just kind of bend into each one. Because in, in reality, it's, which is, you can't catch up. It's kind of, they kind of overlap with one another because they're not on one guitar. But you can cheat it, and that's always fun to do. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's an in-depth song, a lot of chords, and a lot of cool solo stuff. 
a lot of layers to this track, but it's worth it in the end. So I hope you made it through it and I'll see you guys again for guitarlessons 365com